Hello, everybody. Today I'm not going to be doing a review as, as general. I've had a lot of suggestions on what I can do to do videos. So I decided to kind of take up and, and start doing one. I've had a lot of questions and, and inquiries about all my various brushes. I don't know if you can, you can see them all. You know, the brushes I got there. And the brushes I've got all up along here. Now I think in particular people are interested in my big brushes. I like big brushes. So I figured I'd, I'd start off and, and talk a little bit about uh, what's the benefit of a big brush. Well, one of the benefits of a big brush is you can load a lot of soap and uh, uh, you can cover a lot of space on your face without you know a whole lot of effort. Um, disadvantages of a big brush they're big. Uh, I, many times I find myself particularly when I'm in a hurry which is the way it's been a lot lately I'm going with a smaller brush, you know, going with something small. This is the brush I'm going to talk about today, my big brush. But going with something small, you know, even, you know, a small bore brush. But uh, it's kind of better to control when you got a small brush. Big brush, my first big brush was this. This is 28 millimeter, uh, pure badger from Frank Shave, and this is still one of my favorite brushes. Okay, so this is 28 millimeters. How big do you think this one is? I wanted something big like this, and you know, overall. You can kind of see that you know it's not as it hasn't bloomed as much, but this is a 32 millimeter knot. This is the brush I had made three years ago now after my wife Rhonda died. Uh, some guys had, <coughs> excuse me, given me some some money to help pay for expenses and things and and uh, I wanted to uh, to just get something to commemorate uh, the passing of my wife and her memory um, I wanted something special see all of the brushes that you see that I've got here they're not expensive they're not uh, probably the most expensive brush maybe maybe 60 70 bucks if I had a custom made at, at the most and that's using you know cheaper materials but I decided to go whole hog out with this this is a WSP wet shaving product brush 32 millimeter extra dense super fine badger now that's not the very top of the line of wet shaving products not but I think it's it's one of the the most favored of the knots the super fine of the wet shaving product knots uh, Scott Pavkovich uh, good friend of mine uh, turned the handle and set the knot. This is a white teak burl wood. Now, has custom made. I wanted something big in the hand. I wanted something heavy. But you know when there's there's some of the brushes I've got I I put a lot of weight in and the and the heaviest brush I've got is I think this one that I've put a bunch of weight in or maybe 
maybe this one. Yeah, this is this is the one. This is uh, just a, a, a badger knot in. Uh, I can't remember what this is called, but it's a Omega uh, Barber Barber Pro, something like that. You know, the, the brush overall costs maybe you know twenty twenty five bucks, something like that. Maybe even less. I can't remember. But I put a bunch of weight in this, uh, a bunch of BBs with wax. This is 175 millimeters. Well, this one is 150 millimeters, or 150 grams, not millimeters, 150 grams weight. So 150 grams, it's 136 millimeters tall. That's five and a half inches. It's set, the knot is set at 52 millimeters, which means 52 millimeters up. Uh, probably, if I were to do it again, and if the knot ever got loose and came out, I'd raise it up a little bit higher, just because this is such a dense knot. But, you know, it kind of in that, that 52 50 range is is about where you want most of your knots to sit uh, for general purpose but because this is so dense it would have been better if I'd set it up just a little bit more and Scott and I talked about that and, and we decided kind of 52 would be a, a pretty good thing and, and see when it before it bloomed it was a lot more closed up it was you know like that before it, it bloomed out at the widest point which I guess is down here it's 50 millimeters wide so when I say I went whole hog out on on this this brush uh, cost over $200 the knot itself uh, at the time, I think uh, was 150 bucks, um, but was able to get a, a, a reduced rate and it ended up being like maybe 110, 112. Um, then of course the the wood and Scott's labor that went into it. Let me put this in and get it soaking a little bit. But a, a big brush like that, that has a dense head. One of the things that people talk about is flow through. And flow through is, is does that not release the lather once it gets in there? Does it let it go? Now, one of the disadvantages of that very, very dense knot is that it doesn't let go as well as it could have if we'd set a little bit higher. Um, but it it is a good face lathering knot. It's a good bowl lathering knot. And and I haven't used it a lot. I'll, I'll pull it out and use it occasionally. But there's still, because it's such a dense knot, there's still some breaking in period that to do with it. Um, going to use some Mitchell's wool fat. I've had that soaking here. And one of the advantages of a knot like this, it just flat busts into the the, uh, the soap. And Mitchell's wool fat is known to be one of the more difficult soaps to uh, to make a good lather with. you got to get it wet. But it pulls pretty good amount of soap loading it. So got some soap loaded on there. I'll get my face with it. I've used my uh, corn huskers mixture, corn huskers, and some uh, grapefruit essential oils. 
because I haven't had it, didn't take a shower this evening. Let me show you. Corn huskers, just corn huskers lotion. A lot of glycerin. Uh, ingredients water, glycerin. It's got a little bit of alcohol and various other things. Some people don't like it because it's old school and it's got some things that people say, oh, that's bad for you. And I don't care about that. I think there's it's a lot of a lot of hooey about that saying, oh, this this is bad for you. I remember back whenever I was a kid, they tried to uh, outlaw saccharin, which is a well, it was one of the first diet sweeteners. And I remember my grandma being very, very upset about it because that's what she used in her tea. And what was all behind that is there was some powerful businessmen and politicians that were investing in uh, NutraSweet and they wanted to get that on the market. But Mr. Sweet had been proven to be almost just as bad, but they were able to get the FDA to suppress that information and ignore it. But they tried to get saccharin banned so that they'd have a better market for the NutraSweet. Well, they finally got the NutraSweet done and got that on the market and it took over and and uh, but I still think the pink package is good. I want to use a Mercure 38C long handle. This is a two-piece razor and I'm going to use a Treat Platinum blade. One of those. It's one of my favorites. It's not an expensive blade. It's a blade that a lot of people discount and say, oh, it's not any good, but I think it's one of the better blades. So here we go. Now some of you maybe interested in wanting to hear what's going on in the rest of my life. Still struggling with the court system. Still struggling to uh, find necessary treatment for my son. What I found is that even though I have full coverage insurance through work and he is on he has full coverage special coverage Medicaid because of the adoption which is basically two 100% insurances he can't get treatment because or the treatment that he needs or the treatment I think he needs because the places that can handle his issues aren't on the special list for my primary insurance, which is my insurance through work, and the places that, that the one or two places that could potentially have them, well, they've got a waiting list. And the thing is, the Medicaid should pay for everything, but I'm fighting with them because they're saying, oh, since the primary didn't, well, because he's an adopted kid, that shouldn't make any difference. So, some prayers on that, folks. With me fighting bureaucracy. But really, when it comes down to getting services for teenagers,
there aren't very many out there that know what they're doing. They're really trouble teams, the, the, the teams that are acting out. Most places don't know how to deal with them, don't want to deal with them. And then just doing the whole insurance dance. You only have a certain window of opportunity when they act out and do something that would enable you to get them in a higher level of care. But then if there's no bed, by the time the bed comes around, they go, oh, too much time has passed. Has they done has it done anything in the last 48 72 hours? Well, no, when he did, you didn't have a bed. Yeah. Too bad he didn't qualify. It's Easter weekend. Really sad thing that happened with Egypt, that church in Egypt. talking about oh terrible this and oh terrible that there's not a whole lot of outcry from the mainstream media when it's Christians being persecuted killed And any more in the environment that we're living in. There are a lot of populations where there's not much outcry for certain populations being persecuted, being killed, being martyred. I can name off a whole big old list of them. Let me try some bowl leather in here. Let's show you how that goes. One of the benefits of a big brush with bowl leather in is if you got a big enough bowl like I've got here, you can really get some leather going. I really need to use this brush more and bowl lather with it more to get it to splay out and to bloom a little bit better. There you go. See it kind of poofs out a little bit more. I'm giving some thought of going back and totally revising my book. Oh, not totally, but revising it. And adding some thoughts that I've had over the last year, year uh, 
related to trauma by simply existing. You know, one of the focuses of my book is that you, know, you don't have to have severe events that would cause things like post-traumatic stress disorder or reactive attachment disorder in order to be impacted by trauma. And in fact, everybody, and I mean everybody, has been impacted by trauma whether you want to admit it or think about it or not. And that's what I call, and that's the main title of my book, called, is Trauma Bombs. Trauma is like, is, is many times an event that explodes into your existence like a bomb, like a nuclear bomb, that causes severe pain and damage at the time. Well, that could be normal life events like death in a family. Could be something as normal and common as having a, a, an illness. Being diagnosed with diabetes. Being diagnosed with heart disease. Being diagnosed with, with high blood pressure. Any more of those are kind of normal things that so many people have. It could be something like an automobile accident, broken leg, uh, loss of a job. All those things, normal routine things that many times people just say, well, you know, shit happens, move on, get over it. And to a certain extent, there's truth in that. Yeah, you do have to just move on, get over it. You first have to decide that you're not going to let it harm you. You're not going to let it traumatize you as much as it could. But still, the old saying, time heals all, all wounds. In the grief process, it, it's, it's when we have a loss, it's intense. We go through the stages of grief, you know, anger and denial and negotiating and all that stuff until we finally move and are able to, to kind of put it behind us. But even when we do that, even when we successfully grieve something, unless we put into context that event and how it stacks up to the next events in our lives, be them little or be them big, there's an accumulative effect. And in fact, there's like a nuclear bomb damaging radiation emanating from that event outward. And that's kind of the, the whole concept of my my book in that and look at my, my own personal life, how the events of my very early life colored and shaped and molded and poisoned. The next event, it was a magnifying impact. The next event was even more severe and harder to get over than the previous event. And but the thing is, even if I hadn't had those bigger events early in my life, I still would have had events. I still would have had issues related to just growing up, just interacting with other people, just living a normal everyday life there are traumas. Well, as they accumulate, they impact what's going on in the rest of your life. So, got off on a sidetrack. 
talking about big brushes. One of the things that that uh, I commented when Scott made this is that the big base bulb would be pretty good for somebody that has arthritis, that has problems with with grabbing on to a, a narrower type and having to, to kind of pinch and close their hands. It can cause some cramping. Well, this one, it's not as much. You could could use it like that. I just clean my brushes out with just water. And I pour water into the the knot. I don't know if you can see it. I just pour water straight down into it. Rinse it out, squeeze it out. I put my hand like that underneath the stream. Just squeeze it like you would a sponge until I've gotten all the soap out of it. Don't use real hot water, just warm water. <clears throat> then I shake it out. That's kind of what it looks like there. And I take a towel. Wipe off my handle. Wipe off my hand. And then I just do this. Turn a little bit. Do that some more. Just rub it real briskly. And that's all I do, Tom. Occasionally, and you know, if you clean out your brush well after every use, you don't have to do this a lot, but occasionally, particularly well, with all with badgers and boar brushes, you need to to clean them and condition them. You just use a, a mild um, stripping type of of uh, I think what's it called? Um, clarifying. That's what it's called. You use a, a simple clarifying shampoo. Put a little dollop in it. Rinse it off do that a couple of times and then use a clarifying conditioner and put some condition on both your your boar and your badger brushes you don't have to do it a lot don't have to do it often maybe it just depends on how much you use them if you don't use them a whole lot you know maybe every every year just to get some moisture back into them uh, if you use it a lot, you might want to do it a little bit more often. But uh, brushes are hard to keep in good shape. Just let them air dry. At least this one. And whenever I I talk about my uh, bore brushes, when I talk about how I deal with them. I, do a little bit different in some ways, but if you want a big brush, you know, um, try one of the less expensive ones. Like I say, the this uh, pure badger that I got from Frank Shaves. I've had it the longest now probably over four years now probably close to five nice and soft got good backbone when they talk about backbone that means the stiffness this way now density is stiffness this way but backbone is how it stands up This got a lot of backbone. It doesn't doesn't move very much either direction. But and when you finish drying, you 
I'm going to shape your brush a little bit. But that's it. I'll try to do these as frequently as I can. Um, got some things on the way that that uh, company reached out and said they wanted to give me a sample to review and to show to you guys a new product that uh, they're introducing. Um, I said, sure, why not? So until next time, have some good shaves. Work hard at being happy, but definitely be safe. I'll talk to you later.